What's going on everybody? Almost Counts Collectibles here and in today's video we're going to be repairing a Transmetal Rat Trap from the Beast Wars Transformers action figure line. Now unfortunately Rat Trap along with other Transmetals and Transmetal 2 characters suffer from paint damage. The main reason for that is the Transmetal paint that was applied to these action figures in certain areas wasn't really properly coated or sealed with any kind of a clear coat or other sealant for that matter to keep it from eventually chipping and cracking and breaking away. If they would have put a good clear coating over it, it probably would have lasted a lot longer, but unfortunately they did not. So many of us are left with transmetal rat traps that look like this. As you can see, a lot of the paint is chipped and cracked and uh, is coming off in a lot of areas. Um, one of the other areas, the other wheel, which I've already removed, now looks like this. Now, it wasn't quite this bad. I did rub it down a little bit with a paper towel and got a lot of the metallic paint off of there. So, in this video, I'm going to show you how to take your damaged transmetal rat trap and make it look a lot better. We're going to get rid of all this flaking paint. We are going to put a nice metal flake red color paint on it. And we're going to kind of restore it a little bit back to a uh, better looking version. Now, Rat Trap seems to be the figure that suffers the worst from this. Mainly because um, I don't know if it was the specific kind of paint of because of where the paint is on this figure. Uh, Transmetal Cheetor had a lot of Transmetal paint as well. But even the Cheetors don't seem to ever quite be as bad as the Rat Traps do. Uh, Transmetal 2's um, Cheetor with his uh, left shoulder, I believe it was, and other areas. Some of those also eventually suffer from the cracking and chipping of paint. But Rat Trap always seems to be the worst. So in this specific video, we are going to restore Rat Trap. I'm going to show you how to take it apart and prep the pieces that you need. And I'm going to show you the type of paint that I'm going to use. And then we'll take a look at the final product. So for disassembly, it's not quite as easy as you might think. Now to get the wheels off, I'll show you the other wheel that I've already taken off. So I have taken his left wheel off already. I have the wheel portion and I have the transmetal covering portion right here. Now this is actually over top of the wheel. Each of the top and bottom little prongs here go into the little corresponding cutout holes. But there are also these two little prongs on the inside that go into these openings on the wheel. And unfortunately, they are pretty much glued in there. Now I'll show you with this other one I'm about to take off how to easily remove it without doing much damage um, and to be able to put the actual covering back on there. We actually have to use a drill bit to kind of drill the top portion out and get rid of what was glued so that it separates so we don't have to break or crack or bend anything trying to force these two pieces apart. Now the top portion up here that we are going to paint as well, this back plate up at the top, is fairly easy to remove. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Actually, all you need is a small cross point screwdriver. There is a screw located right here that you can see at the tip of the screwdriver. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this screw. Once we remove this screw, these plates will come right off. Now don't lose your screws. Let's go ahead and set that over here to the side. And the plating right here actually comes off fairly easily. So we have the plating off. We have one of the wheels off. And let me move this out of the way a little bit so I can get this off. There we go. And these are the main areas that uh, suffer. The actual transmetal paint on the smaller wheels. I never really ever notice a problem with that, with it breaking or flaking off, um, as well as the small little brackets on the side of the rat face. They are always in pretty good condition themselves, so we mainly just have to worry about the wheels and this back plate. Now, for this other wheel, I'm going to show you how to remove these. So there is one screw holding the wheel portion on there. You can see it right here at the tip of the screwdriver. We are simply going to take this screw off. Let 
and we will set it down here to the side and we are done with taking off all of our pieces of rat trap I'll go ahead and set him here in the background all right now the hard part is actually separating this wheel from the actual brown bracket here the covering so you see the pegs that are poking through you can kind of see maybe in the camera I'm not sure the um, the glimmer the reflection of the glue that is around it now I did try to take this off without messing with these to try to force it out but um, it was going to cause it to break so I highly suggest that you do my method if you're going to remove them and what we are going to do is take a drill bit and the drill bit that I've chosen is just a little bit smaller than the actual opening of this brown hole right here so what I'm going to do is completely remove that white peg down uh, a little less than a quarter of an inch so we are going to go ahead and drill this out we're gonna go a little bit further and we should be good right there and we'll get rid of the little flakes now as you can see I basically just drilled it out down to kind of near the surface of it we're gonna do the same with the other Now when you're drilling this out, do not get in a hurry. Don't put your drill on full speed. Because we could end up damaging something that we don't want to damage. We are simply trying to get this into position where we can actually get it apart. Um, that might have actually been enough right there. I will clean up these little pieces that are left with an X-Acto knife. But that probably did it. Now once you drill those out, all we need to do is slightly pull down on these little tabs on the left and the right that are actually holding it in place. So we are going to grab a flathead screwdriver. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get a small flathead screwdriver here. And we're going to press down on this tab while pushing forward. So I'm gonna press forward with my thumbnail and I'm going to bring it back with the flathead. And we should be able to wiggle it forward. Oh, I almost had it. As you can see, the transmetal paint is coming off everywhere on my hand. So this stuff really flakes off once it starts to go. All right, there we go. Pop it out. Get it out of the other side. And as you can see, it popped right off. So um, we drilled it down just far enough to get rid of that glue at the end. And we can still put it back on here just fine. We can even add a little bit more super glue if we wanted to. I don't really even think that'll be necessary. You saw how hard it was to get off even after we had uh, got rid of the portion that was glued together. So what we're going to do now is very similar to this right here. We are going to rub this down. Um, you don't have to use anything special. Uh, get a basic, um, any kind of paper towel or anything like that. So we're going to go ahead and step away and rub this down real good with a paper towel to get as many of these flakes off as we can. And we will be right back. All right, we're back. Now, as you can see, uh, you don't need to rub these down perfectly to where there's absolutely no transmetal paint remaining. This one was pretty bad. So just going over it a few times, um, rubbing it a little, uh, you know, a little rough with a, a good quality paper towel, uh, took a lot of the transmetal paint off. This one right here, it, it took a little bit more, but for the most part, the rest of it's staying on pretty good. And then for the actual back plates, 
mainly just at uh, where the top portion is, is where a lot of the transmetal paint actually came off of there. So we just want to get all of the real loose flakes off and get them out of the way. You don't have to clean them up perfectly. I'm going to go ahead and paint them just like this. So we're going to go ahead and give them a couple good coats of the paint that we're going to use. And we're going to let that dry. So real quick, the paint we're actually going to use, um, I actually picked up from a local Hobby Lobby store. This is the Gloss Custom Red Metal Flake paint. It is the Tester's brand um, spray enamel. And I think this is going to turn out quite well. I think it's going to match the paint that was already on there, at least well enough to blend in with a little bit of existing transmetal paint that's going to be left. And when we're all done with that, you'll notice that on some of these pieces, there is an orange color as well. Well, we've got that covered too. With a simple fine point orange paint marker, this color is almost an exact match to that orange. We are going to apply this as our last coat of paint to get our orange coloring back. So we're going to go ahead, take these to the paint room and get them all painted up. And then we'll show you the, uh, the end result there. And then we'll do the orange and we'll get it fully reassembled and we'll show you the final results. So stand by. We will be back in just a moment. All right, everybody, we're all done with the painting. Now I'm going to show you the pieces right here so you can see the colors that we're kind of dealing with. Now the paint that's on here is actually three good coats of paint. So it's a little bit darker than I originally planned for, but I think it still turned out great. Um, I'll show you the top pieces here. Now the reason I did uh, three coats of paint instead of actually just doing one good coat was the fact that I didn't properly clean all of the items. Uh, there was some transmetal paint left on there. And in order to blend it in and kind of keep from seeing the differences underneath, I went ahead and did three good coats. Now I will show you this is the tail. Now this is actually just one good coat of paint that I have placed on the tail. Once again, the tail wasn't perfectly cleaned, but it was missing the majority of its actual transmetal paint. Um, I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. You can see that the tail um, is slightly lighter than the actual wheel back here in the background, which the tail right now as it is, is probably more of an exact match to the existing transmetal paint. But this right here is actually going to be a very good match um, anyways. So this is the final product for the base coats of just the red uh, metal flake paint that we're doing. Um, still very shiny and nice looking. I think it's going to look very well. I'm going to go ahead and add the orange accents um, that actually go on here to the pieces. And then we'll check back when that's done. And then we'll fully reassemble. And we will see what the finished product looks like compared to an original rat trap that still has some damage to it. So stand by and we will finish the orange paint. All right, everybody, we're back and we are done with the orange paint. Now, to be completely honest, I probably could have done it just a little bit better. But overall, for what I'm doing here today, I think it turned out quite well. And I think it's going to look pretty good on the finished product here. So those were the wheels. I went ahead and snapped them back into the brown wheel part. And here is the back bracket with the orange, uh, you know, coloring there in the front. And once again, the wheels snapped back on there just fine, and they're nice and snug, so no need for any glue. And we're going to go ahead and stick Rat Trap back together um, the way that we took him apart, and we will check out the final product. All right, everybody, we're back, and Rat Trap has been fully reassembled. So let's go ahead and check out our finished product. Now we're going to go ahead and spin um, Rat Trap around here real quick so we can get a look at the back. Now we will do a side-by-side -side comparison in just a moment. But I think overall Rat Trap turned out very well. Now uh, once again I could have probably done a little bit better job with the orange paint. Uh, taking my time just a little bit more and with the red paint 
I could have polished down and cleaned up those plastic pieces to fully remove the transmetal paint that was existing, but I think for a quick restoration job, Rat Trap turned out absolutely amazing, looks very close to his original self, and way, way better than the aged, beat up, broken paint original Rat Trap that he started out as. Now we will do a side-by-side -side comparison real quick. I will show you my childhood Rat Trap over to the right and the restoration one here to the left for an actual comparison of what they look like. Now the rat trap to the left was in much worse condition than mine was. One of the wheels was practically 60% or more of the transmetal paint was missing um, and the rest was just completely beat up much like the one you see here to the right. So this is what you end up getting with most rat traps. It starts to crack and then it starts to flake off um, until it just looks like an absolute disaster. Over here to the left, we have the restoration job. And once again, um, it just, I think it looks very, very good. And if you have an old rat trap that is just beat up and uh, looks like mine over here to the right or worse, this quick restoration job is going to bring life back to your rat trap and I think it's going to just make it pop and uh, make it look almost new if you just take your time. So we will go ahead and transform both of these back into their rat modes and we will get another look at the rat traps when they are back in their actual beast modes. All right, we are now in beast mode, and once again, you can see our restoration job here to the left and my original rat trap over here to the right. We will go ahead and put these guys on 360 so we can go ahead and get a look at them. So I can't say enough good things about this red paint. I think it looks great. Um, it matches very well close to the original color. It's still very shiny and reflective, but it just looks a hundred times better. And I think that you will be pleased if you decide to do this restoration job. It's really going to make your rat trap look outstanding compared to that broken metal, nasty looking transmetal paint. Uh, once again, before we go, I'll show you exactly what I used to get this done. So that was our actual beast modes. So let's go ahead and do a quick review. I'm going to transform um, our restoration job back to robot mode. I don't even like transforming the damaged rat trap because that paint is constantly flaking and coming off. So this will also make your rat trap a lot more fun to play with again and transform if you choose to. So let's go ahead and transform our restoration back to his robot mode and we'll take a look at exactly what I used and what you will need to make this happen. All right, we are back in robot form. Once again, much more enjoyable and much more smooth to transform him back to his robot form when you don't have all of that paint flaking off on your hands and getting everywhere. So this is really gonna bring your rat trap back to life. We're gonna go ahead and talk about real quick what we actually used to get this effect. We're gonna go ahead and put rat trap on display, um, turn him around so you can see the finished product here to the back and we will look at all of the actual items again. So there's the back of Rat Trap. Now here is the paint. You might be able to find similar paint or even a closer match, but I think this is almost dead on. This is the Tester Spray Enamel, and the color is Gloss Custom Red Metal Flake. The number is 1629, and I picked this up at my local Hobby Lobby store for about $5.79. So that is the paint that we used. For the orange effect, to color in the orange pieces again, we used a simple orange paint marker. Now here is the packaging that it comes in. It is the paint marker brand, um, fine tip orange. This was $2.99. And this is number 392092. So that is the paint that you will need and the paint pen to color the orange back in. You will need a cross point screwdriver to help disassemble rat trap. And I highly recommend a small um, flathead screwdriver to help get those actual little clips out of the wheel. 
And finally, you will need a drill and drill bit. Once again, make sure your drill bit is just ever so slightly smaller than the actual brown opening so you don't uh, destroy both of those. All we're trying to do is shave down that clearish color plastic um, in the middle of the brown that is actually super glued. So that has been our rat trap restoration slash paint fix. I'm going to go ahead and put him on a rotation here so we can check him out. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this will help you restore your rat trap. Take your time. If you want to fully clean the pieces of all the transmetal flaking, it will turn out much better and you will only have to put one or two coats as opposed to three good coats on there. And just take your time and maybe even tape off a little bit for the actual orange paint. Um, I did it fairly quickly just to get it done and see what our results would look like. So until next time, everybody, enjoy the quick 360 of Rat Trap, and I will see you next video.